Hi everyone, Paul Bertarelli reporting from Orlando at the AUVSI show. That may be one alphabet you haven't heard of. It's the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, drones. AUVSI covers every unmanned vehicle imaginable from ramp crawlers to submarines, but 60% of it has to do with things that fly, rotor or fixed wing. So like it or not, drones are part of general aviation. The association and the show, just like the industry it supports, is experiencing massive growth. There are more than 600 exhibitors here at Orlando, and that makes this show larger than HAI and about the size of Aero that we covered last month in Europe. For an overview, we spoke to AUVSI's Michael Toscano. It's, a, it's amazing just a year ago of where we are now with people understanding the possibilities or the applications that unmanned systems bring to bear. And we're talking about things that fly in the air, that uh, operate on the ground, and go in our oceans as well. So it's the, the air, ground, and maritime. If you look at the industry itself and you look at the dollars, it's probably 60% air and then the 40% is divided between the, the ground and the maritime. It's probably tw uh, about 10 or 15 to 20 and then uh, about 25 to 15 for the ground into the maritime state as well. So air is the, the biggest one right now that, uh, that we've seen and that's because if you look at where the military and that's where this technology has come. It's come out of the military and now we're transitioning to the civil and the commercial applications. So when the commercial applications become realized, and that's for us on the air side, is getting into the national airspace, uh, that will make a tremendous difference, and you're going to see this booming effect that takes place, almost like the California gold rush, because there are going to be so many opportunities to utilize this technology. But there are opportunities for us to do something in a more timely manner because it's all about safety. So if you look at those applications for which you could utilize unmanned aircraft systems in a safe manner, the biggest one that comes to mind is precision agriculture, using it for farming. And there's a case where you can pretty much uh, very easily show a safety scenario where it's it will be easy to operate this system without causing any danger to human beings. Uh, one of the other issues people have to deal with is privacy as well. Well, again, if you're doing farming, the crops don't mind if you watch them. Actually, it's pretty good if you do. So the two biggest issues of safety and privacy are virtually eliminated if you use it for that particular application. So there are guidelines and uh, opportunities that exist, and that's one of the things that we're working very closely with the FAA and the industry is working with the, and to do that. So when you talk about 400 feet and below, daylight only, uh, line of sight, these are opportunities that exist today. So if you're doing search and rescue, you don't need to be at any higher altitude than that. So the technology is here today, and I believe that the FAA is trying to lean forward to allow for a safe application in the national airspace. The FAA is now entertaining business cases or, or cases that you can present and they are working on those and one of them may be that the industry presents these to have uh, industry-led uh, capabilities. If not, the FAA is working through the small rule uh, aspects and they are entertaining the possibility of doing this sooner. So I do know that the FAA is in communications with the movie industry, with the power line industries, with the, the farming industry to see once the first case is made Made, then everybody else can follow that model that was acceptable and do the same. It is all about safety.